This log home, built on the side of the original, is a replica of the Joseph Smith Sr. and Lucy Mack Smith family home. During the time that the prophet Joseph Smith lived in the family log home in Palmyra, New York, events transpired that greatly influenced the young boy and prepared the way for the restoration of the gospel. The young prophet Joseph Smith lived in the family log home at the time of the religious confusion that led him to a nearby grove of trees to ask of God which church he should join. In addition, it was in this home that the angel Moroni appeared to the young Joseph with instructions regarding the coming forth of the Book of Mormon. Joseph Sr. and his wife Lucy resided here in their Palmyra log home with their nine children for nearly seven years. Lucy later reported, In two years from the time we entered Palmyra, strangers, destitute of friends, home or employment, we were able to settle ourselves upon our own land in a snug and comfortable, though humble habitation built and neatly furnished by our own industry. Joseph's mother's memoir is dominated by two themes. If, if we were trying to read her mind and understand what worried that family, what encouraged that family, we would notice that she's worried about how to pay the bills, how to make ends meet, how the family's going to get ahead, provide for the several children, provide for the parents as they get older. And we'd also notice that a, a spiritual quest is a dominant uh, theme that runs throughout her life and her husband's life as well. Within these walls and in the nearby woods and fields, the Lord prepared Joseph for his role in the restoration of the gospel. The main room of the log home was the center for family activity. In addition to daily food preparation and other chores, the family met together here every morning and evening to join in prayer. William Smith recalled, We always had family prayers since I can remember. I well remember father used to carry his spectacles in his vest pocket, and when we boys saw him feel for his specs, we knew that was a signal to get ready for prayer. Such a faithful family foundation served well for the young Joseph Smith, Jr. Father and Mother Smith taught their children that worship and reverence for God was not restricted to Sundays and formal church meetings, but had a central place in their everyday home and family life. The Smith family witnessed many fascinating and joyful moments in this room. Following Joseph's first interviews with the angel Moroni, the family would gather together to share and discuss those things Joseph learned concerning the coming forth of the Book of Mormon and their hope for further knowledge of the plan of salvation. Lucy recalled, I think that we presented the most peculiar aspect of any family that ever lived upon the earth, all seated in a circle, father, mother, sons, and daughters, listening in breathless anxiety to the religious teachings of a boy 18 years of age. The sweetest union and happiness pervaded our home. No jar nor discord disturbed our peace and tranquility reigned in our midst. Upstairs in the reconstructed Smith Log home is a bedroom. It is likely that a larger upstairs bedroom was for the six sons in the Smith family. Alvin, Hiram, Joseph, Samuel, William, and Don Carlos. A smaller back bedroom was probably for Sophronia and Catherine, and it's likely that the youngest daughter, Lucy, stayed in the downstairs room off her parents' bedroom. This upstairs bedroom is representative of the room where Moroni appeared to Joseph Smith three times on the evening of September 21st and 22nd, 1823. At the time, Joseph was 17 years old. Sometime after the family had retired to sleep, evidently around 11 or 12 that night, 
Joseph fervently prayed for a manifestation of his spiritual standing before God. While I was thus in the act of calling upon God, I discovered a light appearing in my room, which continued to increase until the room was lighter than at noonday, when immediately a personage appeared at my bedside, standing in the air, for his feet did not touch the floor. Next to Joseph stood a glorious resurrected being sent from the presence of God. He informed Joseph that God had a work for him to do and that, as a result, Joseph's name should be had for good and evil among all nations, kindreds, and tongues. This heavenly messenger was Moroni, an ancient prophet who had previously lived upon the American continent over 1,000 years earlier. He instructed Joseph that a record of the Lord's people in ancient America was securely buried in a hill near the Smith home. The time had now arrived for their testimony of Jesus Christ and the fullness of His gospel, which was engraved on plates of gold, to come forth to the world. It appears that in about an hour or two's time, the angel set before the young teenage boy the span of the restoration of the gospel and the part that Joseph would play in God's work. Moroni returned to repeat the same message twice more that night, each time adding instructions. Joseph's mission was to translate the record by the gift and power of God. In so doing, God would bring to pass a marvelous work among the children of men. For more information on Hallowed Ground Sacred Journeys, please visit virtualtours.byu.edu.